to have with us today Reverend Elaine Donlan from the San Francisco Buddhist Temple. Welcome, Reverend Donlan. Let us begin with quiet meditation. Please sit quietly and place your hands together in Gosho. Sensei will ring the bell to begin and end the meditation. Shinshushuka, please rise. It'll be on page 216 of the Purple Book.
Refuge on page 10. The threefold refuge. Difficult is it to receive the human form. Now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the Dharma of the Buddha. Now we hear it. If we do not cross over to the truth in the present life, in what life shall we cross over? Let us with sincerity and true reverence take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I, I take refuge, refuge in the Buddha. May we, we together with all, all sentient beings awaken to the great way of enlightenment and to the unsurpassed intent of Omega Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we together with all sentient beings enter the storehouse of the Dharma, becoming like the wisdom ocean. I take refuge in the Sangha. May we together with all sentient beings become units in true accord in harmony with all things. The peerless, profound, and wondrous Dharma is rare to encounter, even in many hundreds and thousands of kalpas. Now we are privileged to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of the Tathagata's teaching. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Today's sutra will be Jusege, which is on page 93 of the Purple Book. Oh, no. 
We will now have a Dharma message by Reverend Elaine Dalman. sentient beings throughout the countless and inconceivable Buddha worlds in the Ten Quarters, having received my light and having been touched by it, will become soft and gentle in body and mind, surpassing humans and devas in those qualities. Should it not be so, may I not attain the perfect enlightenment. Namo Namo Good morning, Ohio Gazimas. Happy New Year. Very nice to be here back at Edmundji to welcome in the new year. Um, some may ask and have asked, um, how can you say Happy New Year uh, when there's so much chaos and conflict and crisis happening uh, in the world around us today? But I say Happy New Year um, as an aspiration in the same way that Shinhan said, may they, there be peace on earth and may the Dharma spread. And he said this despite the ongoing feudal wars, deadly earthquakes, devastating famines, religious persecutions, and more, all occurring during his lifetime in medieval Japan. And it would be totally delusional of me to proclaim that there is no suffering in the world today, that um, there is an uh, imaginable um, hardship for so many here in the U.S. and abroad. And that sometimes navigating, just navigating the challenges of this very imperfect and impermanent life is extremely difficult and exhausting. But I find hope in the 33rd vow of the larger Pure Land Sutra, which I just read. Especially the phrase, sentient beings, having received my light and having been touched by it, will become soft and gentle in body and mind. I find it such a hopeful and beautiful sentiment coexisting in these confusing times of social disease. So what exactly does soft and gentle in body and mind look like in everyday life? And how does that even manifest in my life as this new year opens and begins to unfold? We all know about the three poisons of attachment, aversion, and delusion, also known as uh, craving, anger, hatred, and ignorance. The Buddha taught that the three poisons, or mental kleshas, or mental defilements, are truly the root of our suffering. And the deeper I sink into craving, anger, and ignorance, the darker my world becomes. And the more clouded my judgment becomes and the more conditional my compassion becomes. In the Pure Land Sutras and in Shinran's writings, he taught how the light of wisdom shines into our minds, dispelling the darkness of craving, anger, and ignorance. When we hear the words, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, which means I entrust myself to the Buddha of inconceivable light. The sutra assures us that sentient beings who encounter this light have the three defilements swept away and they become soft and gentle in body and mind. And so becoming soft and gentle in body and mind means I'm able to let go of it. Let go of the fierce clinging and grasping to comfortably adapt to new circumstances and situations as they unfold not just for myself, but also for the benefit of others, for my family, my friends, our larger communities. One who is soft and gentle in mind is free from the rigid expectations and inflexible self-interest. 
Amida is constantly, compassionately shining wisdom light on us, helping to illuminate the existence of attachments and desires. Shinran wrote in the preface of his great work, The Theater of Shinsho, quote, the unhindered light is the sun of wisdom, dispersing the darkness of our ignorance, end quote. And more encouragingly, or most encouragingly, I would say, everyone receives this light. Again, Shinran wrote, quote, the light of wisdom exceeds all measure, and every finite living being receives this illumination that is like the dawn, end quote. Every finite living being, we are all embraced. I had the good fortune to go to the UK two months ago, actually to the middle of England, about a two and a half hour train ride north of London, uh, straight up the middle amidst uh, hundreds of sheep farms to attend a conference called uh, UK Intra Pure Land Buddhism. And there were folks from five different Pure Land schools, Jodo Shinshu from the Nishi, the Higashi, the Amida Order, the Trayaratna Buddhist Order, and the Bright Earth Buddhist Order. The UK Nishi Honganji was represented by Reverend Enrique Galvin Alvarez, who uh, has been here uh, multiple times and always has really lovely things to say about the Enmanji Sangha. Also from the Nishi Honganji was Reverend Luella Matsunega and Reverend Caroline Grazer. From the Higashi Honganji, our sister tradition, was Reverend Mauricio Mundaku, a Shin priest formerly from Brazil, but now residing in, um, in Europe. And there were representatives from the Triratna Buddhist Order, which was founded in 1967 in the UK, and now uh, is a worldwide movement, describing itself as, quote, an international network dedicated to communicating Buddhist truths in ways appropriate to the modern world. Neither monastic nor lay, we are simply Buddhists. And those folks uh, that participated in the conference had an affinity for the Pure Land teachings within um, this particular um, school. There were also priests from the Amida Order, a devotional Pure Land Buddhist community with quote unquote, a karmic affinity to Amida Buddha. They were established in 1998. They take an ecumenical, ecumenical approach by respecting all Pure Land traditions, although they draw on uh, the teachings of Shandao Honen and Shinran in particular. And lastly, the Bright Earth Buddhist Order. Uh, their temple was established in 2014 in the town of Malvern, which was where the conference was held. Uh, they were co-sponsors of it. And there was, they were initially made up of seven ministers who were previously members of the Amida Order, so they split off. Uh, the Bright Earth Buddhist Order was influenced by the late Shin priest, Reverend uh, Koyo Kubose, whose father, Reverend Gyome Kubose, founded the Buddhist Temple of Chicago in 1944 and later the Bright Dawn Center of Oneness in Chicago. The UK Bright Earth Buddhist Temple's approach is engaged Buddhism with a very strong ecological emphasis. And I rather liked how they explained their spiritual beliefs. Quote, there's a source of infinite love and wisdom that is always present and that accepts us just as we are. This love is inside us, outside us, and moves through us. It's not always easy to see. One way of seeing this love is as the light of Amida Buddha, whose name means limitless light in light. Human beings all contain this light at their centers. This is often covered up by layers of protection that show up as greed, ill will, and delusion. These protective layers relax and melt away under the light of the Buddha's love. People who continue to live in this light tend to be more relaxed, more compassionate to all beings, and more full of joy." End quote. So the conference was centered on three questions. What is your practice? What is Amida Buddha? And what is the Pure Land? And the respective leaders and priests from each of these five schools presented their thoughts, perspectives, and doctrines with respect to their traditions, religious beliefs. 
And for me, it was just deeply inspiring <coughs> and um, a really affirming gathering. And an added bonus was that although the conference was in Malvern, um, I chose to stay in a really cool town, uh, which was just a 10 minute train ride away to the west called Worcester, as in Worcestershire sauce. That's, that's the most current kind of thing. But they have, uh, Worcester has such a long, deep history, being fortified by the Britons in 400 BCE. And even today, there's still a significant area of medieval Worcester remaining. And I thoroughly enjoy exploring <laughs> most of it on my free days, um, especially the Worcester Cathedral. The medieval Church of England Cathedral was founded in the seventh century and houses royal tombs including the uh, tomb of King John, um, a crypt built in 1084, studying cloisters, and a 12th century chapter or meeting house, thought to be the first round chapter house in the world. Worcester Cathedral has been described by many as possibly the most interesting of all of England's cathedrals, um, especially architecturally. And for those interested in architecture, Worcester Cathedral is a must. You, you can see examples of all styles of English architecture from Norman to transitional Norman, early English on through Gothic. And so I spent a long time in the cathedral, experiencing all the nooks and crannies, and remained in awe of the stunning craftsmanship applied to each phase of the cathedral. And I, as I was almost at the end of my self-guided tour, I came across a small side altar room, one of many that were in the cathedral. And at its entrance was an eight by 12 prayer displayed on an easel that was called Prayer of the Holy Land. And, um, and I read it, but I'll, I'll, I'll share part of it with you. It says, O God of justice and peace, we cry out to you in the midst of the pain and trauma of violence and fear which prevails in the Holy Land. Be with those in need, in these days of suffering, we pray for people of all faiths, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, and for all people of the Holy Land. While we pray for an end to violence and the establishment of peace, we also call to bring justice and equity where all people are treated with dignity and honor. And so I was moved by this, this long um, prayer poem that was written. And so I entered the empty sanctuary with its brilliant 34 <coughs> intricately wood carved altar, lit a candle, and sat down, reflecting on this open hearted prayer of peace. And I thought of our own Pure Land Sutra, which provides such a simple yet wise counsel, stating, quote, People in the world should truly respect and love each other, refraining from hatred and envy. They should share things with others, refraining from greed and miserliness. They should always be friendly in speech and expression, refraining from quarrel and dispute, end quote. And I also contemplated the teaching of the historical Buddhist, pithy guidance for troubled times. Hate is never appeased, hatred is never appeased by hatred, but by non-hatred alone is hatred appeased. This is the law eternal. This doesn't mean we don't respond to what we see happening in our life or in the world around us, <laughs> But we do so with the wisdom heart. We move not with the heart of hatred, but one of light, one of compassion for all of the suffering. And I thought about light, the ritual of lighting candles in that beautiful sanctuary, as well as the role that light plays within our own Buddhist tradition, the wisdom light of Amida Buddha, to really see our profound interdependence, that none of us live alone. And because we are so profoundly interconnected, we depend through the whole of our life on the support of others, upon the natural world, upon other people, both known and unknown, seen and unseen. From the Buddhist perspective, this dependency is not a cause for despair, but rather it leads to a sense of connection and deep gratitude. Nothing can be taken for granted. And that wisdom light also allows us to truly understand and appreciate our precious impermanence, received as a gift 
of an ever-changing, unrepeatable life. And so hope in this new year for me lies in the possibilities. To pause, to reflect, to appreciate new opportunities arising, opportunities of self-reflection, of understanding, of deep appreciation and joy. And the possibility of insight that exists every moment, opening us up to the possibility that the next moment may be more compassionate, more mindful, more wholesome than the previous moment. As we begin this new year, may we and all beings awaken in Rita's unhindered light, that hopeful, limitless light of wisdom and compassion. Please join me in Gasho to hear once again the 33rd vow of Bodhisattva Dhammakara from our Pure Land Sutra. When I attained Buddhahood, the sentient beings throughout the, the countless and inconceivable Buddha worlds in the Ten Quarters, having received my light and having been touched by it, will become soft and gentle in body and mind, surpassing humans and devas in those qualities. Should it not be so, may I not attain the perfect enlightenment. Namo Thank you very much, Reverend Nolan, for our New Year's message. Please stand for the closing gatha, which is Shinshu Anthem, on page 130 of this white book.
Are there any announcements? Sure. Good morning. I, I just wanted to share some unsettling news that um, I heard late last night. Uh, the Seattle Betzman Temple um, had an arson attack. Um, everyone's okay. The minister and his family live um, on the property, and so um, everyone's okay. Um, the temple's been temporarily temporarily closed while they're assessing the damages. Police and fire department were still there as of this morning. So um, just keep everybody in your thoughts and if you have friends there, reach out to them to check in on them because uh, as you know, that this is uh, can be a really uh, upsetting situation. So hopefully we'll hear something and we'll also hear about from the BCA as to how we can support the Seattle Vets. Thank you. Any other announcements? If not, this will conclude today's service. Um, I'd like to thank Reverend Donlin for her message and for her um, officiating today's service. George Bao for the concho and the altar setup. Dr. Kent Matsuda for playing the organ. And the January Toban for the flowers and the offerings. If you have not done so, please feel free to offer incense and there will be no refreshments in the hall today, but I think they're passing out something as you leave. So have a happy, happy new year today.